Before we start, I'd like you to hit that red subscribe button so you never have to miss out on any more videos we put out on our channel. Hey there guys, what's up and welcome back to Film Boss. Shark Tank has seen thousands of pitches since it was first aired in 2009. Out of all these, there have been some good, some bad, and some businesses have actually tried to scam the investor panels, otherwise known as the sharks. Since the show itself is a free way to market a product, lots of people try to take advantage of their opportunities when coming on it. Unfortunately for the sharks, they've lost out a lot of money due to lying and scheming. In this list, we'll discuss a couple of scams that occurred on the show. Number 1. Eternova Eternova came onto Shark Tank and pitched what seemed to be a phenomenal idea. They would take the ashes of loved ones and turn the ashes into diamonds one could wear in the form of jewelry such as necklaces, rings, and earrings. Impressed, Mark Cuban ended up investing $600,000 for a 9% stake in the company. But but then, things turned sideways. Grant Mobley, a diamond expert and gemologist, was called to confirm Eternova and it turned out to be a scam. Mobley had seen numerous cases such as these and released a statement saying that Eternova didn't even use the ashes. So you basically get imitation diamonds with no real value nor ties to deceived loved ones. This was a reason why none of the investors were even from the jewelry industry. Number 2. Sweet Balls Sweet Balls was a cake ball company founded by two young men from Dallas, Texas, James McDonald and Cole Egger. When appearing on the show, their idea got $250,000 from Mark Cuban in exchange for 25% of the company. Unfortunately, it was later discovered that the business partners didn't get along too well and there was an ongoing legal case. Cole Egger had made a non-negotiable offer to McDonald to buy out Sweet Balls, which caused McDonald to sue Edgar for breach of contract. Things got even messier when customers began noticing how Sweetballs.net was being redirected to Cakeballs.com, the latter being owned by Edgar. Number 3. You Smell Despite Megan Cummings' haphazard presentation and company name, she was able to walk away with $55,000 from Robert Herjavec for 20% of stakes in her fragrance soap startup. Not only that, but Herjavec promised a $50,000 salary annually for her. However, after the episode, when Herjavec mailed Megan the contract offering her $55,000 for half of the company, she denied it. However, it soon became too difficult to care for each order by herself, and an outside investor was brought in. This outside investor eventually bought out the company. Following this investor's introduction, You Smell ended up shutting down. Number 4. Night Runner 270 Doug and Renata Storer brought Night Runner 270 to Shark Tank in Season 3. They were essentially sneakers with rechargeable LED lights so individuals could brighten up hiking paths. Robert Herjavec bought 50% of the company for $250,000, but the deal didn't go through later. After their episode aired, the store saw four times as many sales and made almost $800,000 in revenue at the end of the year. They decided they didn't need Herjavec and completely ditched their shark, preferring to run solo. The shoes are still selling well even to this day. Number 5. Body Jack Jack Berenger was told by his doctor that he desperately needed to do push-ups, but since he was physically unable to, he created Body Jack. This machine was a helper of sorts, which would make exercising such as push-ups easier to do for those that couldn't get them done. Upon finishing his pitch on the show, Barbara Corcoran and Kevin Harrington split the $180,000 investment, asking for one condition before giving him the money. They wanted him to lose weight. After he successfully did so, he was given the entire amount. Unfortunately, while the website is still active, the company was discontinued in 2012. In live interviews, Corcoran has admitted that investing in Body Jack was the worst decision she'd ever made. Number 6. Hillbilly Clothing Mike Abaticchio and Sean Lees came up with the Hillbilly clothing line and trademarked the name. On Shark Tank, they asked for $50,000 for 25% of the stocks, which intrigued not one, not two, but three sharks. However, 
When time came to actually make the deals, the boys were nowhere to be found. It turns out, they just wanted the free publicity from the show and weren't interested in making any deals at all. Since their episode aired, they've seen massive sales and have expanded their product line to include coffee cups, knives, and backpacks. Number 7. HiCon Fireman Jeff Stroop noticed that attaching the standard fire hose to a standard fire hydrant takes up to 30 seconds, which is a lot of time during a real emergency. And that's why he created HiCon, which was basically a hose that did the same thing as a standard one, but within 3 seconds. Inspired by Stroop, Mark Cuban decided to invest $1.2 million into the company as well as a 3-year employment deal. Unfortunately, when the time came to seal the deal, Mark and Jeff weren't on the same page and the latter wished to license out the design of the Quick Connect hose attachment. The social media accounts for HiCon have been untouched since 2015 and it seems it wasn't able to make it on its own. This brings us to the end of our video which we hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, do let us know by liking the video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never have to miss out on any more videos we put out in the future. Also, while you're here, do watch the two videos that are on your screen right now because we're sure you'll love them. And with that, we'll be seeing you all in the next video.